Hey, welcome to Scar Bears, episode 62. And yes, I pressed the recording button solidly that time. Those who were with me last week heard of that faux pas. Thank you so much for joining me today. And as always, Nate and Brits and Baron, thanks for your post-production magic. If you want them to work on your production endeavors, reach out to them at Nate Barron. Well, you can always find me at linktr.ee forward slash Chris DT Gordon. You can find my podcast, of course, the YouTube channel, my speaking websites. I have some freebies, including the tag one sheet where you can work on your daily dose of gratitude and some other things as well, such as the Chris DT D. D. Gordon's tag and pop shop. Get a nice T-shirt to help someone find their gratitude. Well, today I'm joined by a man of many talents, Michael M. Cohen. How are you today, Michael? I am good. I am good. Yourself? Doing very well, thank you. I appreciate you joining us today. It is warm just outside D.C., I believe. It is. It's a very hot day. I was just out power washing my my backyard, my backyard uh, porch. So, well, it's very hot. It's, it's better to do that than when it's winter. I, I heard some uh, issues can cause, you know, be caused by that, or issues can happen. <laughs> Mistakes can be made. Yeah, yeah. Pro- probably not the best idea. <laughs> yeah. And so usually on Scar Bearers, we talk with people about their physical or emotional scars and how they've uh, gone to deal with them and grow from them. But I'm going to take, a, I'm going to call an audible today. And first, I'm going to highlight some of your varied interests and varied endeavors, Michael, because you are a multi-talented man. And so I'm going to first share my screen here, and we're going to take a look at, see if I can bring it up. Just to correct you, just because I do a lot of things doesn't mean I'm talented. (laughs) Well, you know, I appreciate your honesty there. And so that is uh, definitely uh, appreciated. But I'm going to first look at this one. We have Dweeb's global and so tell me a little bit about this michael this is, looks very interesting yeah they're a non-profit organization so they they do free mentorships for for anyone for mental health issues resume writing you name it they have over 600 mentors around the world uh, and it's completely free i had met the uh the founders in an improv class years ago and um, they wanted to start a podcast for it. So they asked me to host the podcast. So I host the podcast called Second Scene with Michael. And we interview people, people you know about things they're not necessarily known for. So like an engineer who's also a circus performer or something more serious where somebody had to make a big change in their life. I interviewed a woman earlier today whose husband passed away and she had to pivot into a, a completely new life and, and reset. And, and you know, her second scene uh, came out of it and a uh, super strong woman. So Dweebs Global is the nonprofit and I'm just lucky enough to know the founders and uh, I'm having a blast doing the podcast. So that's, that's fantastic. And how, how long have you been associated with them? Well, they've only been around now for about 10, 11 months. So it's relatively new. They started at the beginning of the pandemic. They were doing free resume help for people and then it just blew up. Wow. And so anyone who needs help with pivoting, they can go to dweebsglobal.org to uh, find a service that can help them. Yeah. I mean, anyone that needs advice, if uh, you know, anyone that needs mental health advice, resume, you know, any, any advice you're looking for and you don't know where to turn, we have someone that can help you out. That's fantastic. And we're going to make sure we put that link in the description below. And speaking of that podcast, we have Second Scene. This is your anchor page here. And as you said, it, we talk, you talk about people and their side hustles or their second lives. And so this started from Dweebs Global? It did. They Again, I, I met the two founders in an improv class. And then about a year and a half after that improv class, they were starting uh, their nonprofit. Or it actually already started and it was going well. And uh, they, they have a couple dozen side projects as part of the nonprofit because they have such wonderful volunteers. Uh, And one of their side projects they wanted to start was the podcast. You know, they also have another one where they, I think it was like a a hearing device for people that have have lost their hearing. And I I, I wish they were on here to talk about it because they have some really, really wonderful uh, projects going on right now. But I I do this just hopefully, I, I do the podcast just to hopefully bring attention to their nonprofit. 
Well, that's fantastic. That's that's very kind and generous of your of you to offer your time like that. And also speaking of your time, here's your own website, justmichael.com. And uh, I was watching a little bit of this video. Uh, the first it was like the first episode of Baltimore Loves Talent. Yeah, that came about before the pandemic. Um, it was about three months before the pandemic. I had randomly met a producer that was creating a show. Uh, uh, he wanted to do local reality shows. And one of the, he, he has one for a vet. He has one for actually for pawn shops, which I also own, which we'll go into. And then he wanted to start one for talent. Uh, so we both decided that we would do it for Baltimore because we wanted to you know show what baltimore has to offer and we wanted to give people the opportunity to to show their talents and to get on tv so this is a, a local television show in baltimore called baltimore loves talent and it, it was a it's been a blast to host it's tons of fun met some great people met some very talented people uh that i'll probably be friends with for life so it, it's been a great experience i was watching the video and i saw a number of things like uh that uh quartet in the street singing uh blues mm -hmm. and uh and then i ended it with the guy playing the kazoo uh <laughs> but it looked very interesting and, and something that i picked up on was your uh your your monologue about and it wasn't a monologue like you're performing uh, a scene but you were talking about how baltimore gets a bad rap right and right. that really resonated with me because I live in Minnesota, but I'm originally from Flint, Michigan. Okay. And yeah. We all know so, one thing about Flint, Michigan. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, being from Flint and Detroit, you know, I've got my fair share of, of, of people, you know, showing, you know, sharing disparaging comments. And I actually went to school in, uh, Flint in in college and lived in Flint for a while. And so, you know, while there there are those stories that do are true, there's a lot that gets blown out of proportion. Yes, yes. That's what you're going to, news, news likes to tell you the worst. Mm -hmm. That's what gets their viewers. So Baltimore is a beautiful place. If you've never been to the Baltimore Harbor, please go. They've got one of the best aquariums in the nation. Um, it, it, Baltimore, Baltimore is a beautiful place. Yeah, in fact, uh, is that the uh, Baltimore Harbor right behind you? That is. That, that, that is. looks nice. Mm -hmm. I, at first, I thought it was uh, it was maybe Sydney or uh, maybe uh, Pittsburgh on a really nice day. But... <laughs> nope, I believe it's Baltimore. Got yeah, it's right. checking and see you look at the skyline. <laughs> so, no, I, I uh, applaud you in your many endeavors and... I, I'm going to definitely pay attention and hopefully we can, like we said before the recording, connect for your podcast. So um, the but, podcast has been it's been a gift that they gave me, uh, especially through COVID, just being able to talk to all the different all the different people and and hear their stories and, and just see how strong people are. So, it's you know, it's been, sorry, go ahead. No, no, it's just been it's been a lot more fun than I thought it would be. It's been a lot more rewarding. Yeah, you know, and that's it's just funny how that mirrors my own journey with my podcast here because I decided in January of last year I was going to become a speaker based on my own experience. And then, of course, COVID hit and said, no, you're not. So I decided, well, I better pivot and figure out something to do to hone my speaking skills. So I started this podcast in a way to, you know, sharpen said talents. But then I realized, well, I can't be telling just my story forever. So I started interviewing people and learning their stories. And like you said, I have grown immensely and have been awed and just blessed with so many new friends that I've met through their stories. And I've taken a lot of their, a lot of their um, lessons and put them into my own life. Mm -hmm. uh, I could not agree more. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been an experience. Yeah. So this is this is a little odd for me to be talking about myself. So I'm used to asking people all day long about them. So this is this is this is a bit of a new experience for me. Well, let's let's keep the awkwardness going, okay. uh, because you know here on Scar Bears we talk about not only physical scars but also those emotional scars that sometimes weigh on us much more than the physical ones do. And you have quite the story that 
might resonate with a number of our audience members. Can you please share, Michael? Uh, well, Mike, I lost my brother to uh, alcohol, uh, prescription drugs uh, about six years ago. So he he essentially didn't wake up one day. So we don't we don't know exactly what took him. Uh, his heart just couldn't take it anymore. Um, and yeah, it was it was very hard. He was my best friend for many, many years. Um, yeah, it was difficult and mm. still miss him. So was he struggling with one certain problem or was it a number of factors that led to his alcoholism? Yeah, really. As long as I knew him, he was four years older than me. Him and I got really close when I was, um, I guess, 2021. 20, and then we stayed close through, you know, 30, 32, 34. And he always had a problem with alcohol and, and with prescription drugs. I mean, I remember we both lived in New York and I remember going into Chinatown with him and uh, jumping pharmacies uh, for him to go pick up all of his uh, medication. I mean, this was back in the eighties. It was where he would go, uh, you know, shop for his, his painkillers, you know, his Percocets or Xanax or whatever else he was on, um, codeine. So he, it was a long battle of substance abuse uh, that really did a doozy on the family, um, really changed his personality. Um, I don't know, people who have dealt with others that are substance abusers, when they're that deep into it, their reality changes and their, their, their goals or what they're trying to do all are all based around their fix essentially mm -hmm. and a lot of times their fix isn't even the drugs it's the life or with him it wasn't always the drugs it was the lifestyle he wanted to he wanted people to perceive him having um it kind of all went along together if that makes sense yeah yeah it does what now what kind of occupation did he hold he did not he oh, okay. he managed to not work much much at all so he would always find he would always find a partner that would pretty much take care of him. Okay. Did he have any like driving interests, uh, you know, uh, that really showed him like showed his true colors on those times when he would be himself? I mean, he he was the nicest guy in the world. If you were to spend an hour with him, you would feel you'd feel like a diamond. He would make you feel incredibly special. Um, uh, he had an awesome laugh and, you know, he would, you wouldn't know if you met him that he had a substance abuse problem. Uh, if you got to know him and got close to him at some point, you would know because you'd see it and you'd know because he would have probably gotten over on you somehow. He would have somehow taken advantage of you, with that, which I hate talking about and I hate even saying because I love him dearly and I, I I hate even bringing those things up, but I guess it is, is it is important to talk about. Um, if, I mean, I, I do appreciate your bravery and your courage because I know having those kinds of kinds of conversations is tough, but you know, it might be able to help someone else. I, I agree. I agree. That's yeah. why, I, that's why I'll, that's why I'm talking about it. Well, um, I greatly appreciate it. Yeah. So he, you know, he, he always managed to do well. I mean, he lived in, he lived in Europe for half of his adult life. He lived in St. Bart's. If you know St. Bart's, it's like this very exclusive Island. I mean, he always found a way to, to live this, like, almost like a star's life. Like he, he found a way to, to live extremely well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. I mean, he, uh, you know, he was on the street very briefly a couple times because in between, in between those, those good times, he hit rock bottom, um, things would happen. So what, what is a memory that you will take with you that really shows how wonderful he was despite the problems that he had? Him and I would talk on the phone all the time. And he would just always tell me how special I was and how great I was. He always had confidence in what I was doing. Um, we really, I don't think there's one instant, one for instance I can really name, but I felt like he was the, one of the few people who just really understood me and really got me. And 
even saying, even knowing that a lot of his priorities were off or his, what he was trying to do were off. I, I think he genuinely wanted the best for me and was there for me. And um, yeah, I, I don't know that anyone else has ever been there for me like he was mm. in a lot of respects. I, I, you know, and it's very, I don't know what the word is, but you know, it's, it's uh, I don't know if it's hard for people to imagine in one way, this person screwing you over in a bunch of different things, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you know, their heart wants to be in the right place and was in the right place a lot of times. Yeah. And, and so I'm sorry, when did he pass? It's been about six, six, seven years. Okay. All yeah. right. So we had, we had grown, we had grown apart the last couple of years just because it got so bad. Um, he was in net of rehabs. And uh, a lot of stuff went down with my family. He had moved back uh, and was working in my family business for a while. Um, and, uh, and that did not work out. Mm -hmm. So he took off and um, I, accidentally, I accidentally introduced him to his, his last partner that he had, who was a good friend of mine at the time. <laughs> so even when I wasn't there talking to my brother, I could talk to his partner all the time. So I knew how he was doing. And the last time I saw my brother was about a year and a half before he passed away because he actually came down with meningitis. Oh, wow. He was in a, I think a hospital induced coma uh, while he was recovering for it. So I flew out there. He was in, oh, I'm kind of blanking where he was. He was in Europe. Um, and I flew out there and so did my parents. It was the last time we all really saw him and saw him sober, which was nice because he had to be because he was in the hospital. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, at least the last time you saw him, he was in that condition. Yeah. And you think about him a lot. And, you know, when he was sober and have, I guess, a bit of closure because of that. Yeah. I mean, most him and I did a lot of drinking. Most of our times we're hanging out and drinking, and going out at night. So yeah. that is a lot of my memory. But it was, you know, those are the, the, good, the good times when I was younger, not knowing that it was a problem. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so going forward, I know it's been six or seven years. And I know that um, you said that you're still recovering from it. What's something that it, maybe if you think of him or something just out of the blue just hits you and you just fall into that memory cycle, that memory, I guess, spiral, what's something that really helps you get out of it? Well, I guess to kind of not really answer your question, but kind of, <laughs> I go into, you know, I do things, I'll do a hand movement or I'll laugh. And like, I remind me of him. So it, it hits me a lot just because of things that I do. And what's interesting is I was, I do Zoom with the rest of my family once a week and I was talking to them about that. And they were like, oh my God, like, yeah, you remind us of him too. Like you laugh and you hand movements or gestures or facial expressions. So it was interesting that, yeah, I guess I'm his brother, so we look alike. Yeah. But it's really uh, that I do it to myself, that I'll laugh and I'll hear him. Um, and then to really get out of it, you know, it depends what I'm doing. If I'm alone and I don't have anything to do, I enjoy thinking about him at those times. Like I, I enjoy going into it and thinking about our fun times and, and what we had together and what we did. And I enjoy that. It's hard, but you know, I, I, I'll get a smile and I'll, I, I, I like it. If I, if I'm busy, um, I guess at this point it's been so long that I'm able to, I'm able to kind of push it to the side and, mm -hmm. and come back to it. Um, yeah. No, I, I know that obviously trying to avoid substance abuse is a lesson that you can take away from his life and his passing, but is there something else that you mean like a lesson that he's taught you that you, you hold on to, you know, uh, for either like a good memory or something that has helped you, you know, in, in recent memory? You know, well, you know, I think I do some of the things I do, like I do my improv now and I do the hosting and I do more of that type of thing. Cause I always wanted to, and he always told me I could do it and I'd be good at it. And, and, and I think his passing pushed me to do it in a way. I think it was like, you know what? Like, 
like, I don't want to just die and not having tried the things I always wanted to try and do. Um, so I think that's one of the big things I took for him from him. And then doing my podcast, I, like I told you, he made people feel so special. And I really try to remember sitting like we, for some reason, we used to always sit on his bed. He'd sit, I can remember sitting in, sitting, uh, crisscross applesauce on his bed with his legs and um, us sitting there and, and chatting and just the questions he would ask me. And he was always very interested. He always, he always knew how to just ask questions. He would, he would ask questions and lean and, and, and appear to be completely enthralled with whatever you were saying. I, I you know, knowing you uh, as for as little time as I have, I can definitely tell you've gotten that from him because, you know, with your podcast and, watching the various videos I have of you definitely have that skill. Thank so. you. Thank you. Yeah. I was, I always was jealous that he was such a good people person and I always wanted to, to have that. So I guess going forward, you've given us, you know, you've blessed us with this story and I know it's been hard for you to share. And I appreciate it, Michael. What is one lesson that you, that you would want to impart upon a listener? So, if maybe they're in a situation such as yours, or maybe they're going through a situation, uh, you know, with a loved one who is still suffering, you know, what would you say to them? Every situation is so different. I, I never, I never gave up on him, but I also knew where it wasn't healthy for me and my family to be there for him. Mm -hmm. um, like I always kind of hoped he would come, I'm not kind of, I mean, I always hoped he would come along, uh, come around. I kind of knew he wouldn't, I did not know he was just gonna pass away. Um, if I had known that, I think I probably, I mean, I know I would have spent more time with him uh, in those last few years. I just would have done it guarded. Um, I just would have done it guarded so I, I couldn't have been hurt. Mm -hmm. um, I was a little more able to forgive him and be with him in those times than the rest of my family was. But I think it's also because my relationship with him was different. So, mm -hmm. okay. um, yeah, I don't know if that was, no, you know, <laughs> whatever, advice, but... <laughs> you know, whatever you have to share, you know, we'll gladly take. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, besides the, your various uh, duties as a, podcast host and uh baltimore's got talent and all those other things what else do you have going on in the near future with you well i i own a couple pawn shops so i'm operating those that's that's my that's what allows me to do my other endeavors oh interesting. Um, yeah and I, I i mean i would love to i do i do a little real estate my sister and i had a business together we're we're trying desperately to figure out what else to do together because we love working together um, and then I would like to get out there and do some more acting. I can't wait to do improv in front of people like doing zoom improv just doesn't work. <laughs> I yeah, do it. Just... Just... <laughs> you know, well, last year watching Saturday night live in their, you know, zoom action, you know, zoom interviews and their zoom skits, just, I mean, some of them hit, but a lot was lacking. It's so it's hard. I, we, we do zoom shows every couple of weeks and, we we have so much fun doing them but watching them is a different story so i can't wait to get back on stage i can't wait for things to get opened and to to feel that and then to explore what else i can do maybe with acting or, or that God, i'd love to say singing but i have no singing ability whatsoever so that's not an endeavor i will ever go down <laughs> gotcha well you know what what you uh, lack in talent you can uh, make up for in showmanship that's what people tell me <laughs> there you go <laughs> Well, Michael, it's been a blessing and an honor to talk with you today. I look forward to further conversations. And so uh, thank you very much for your time and enjoy the rest of the beautiful weather down there in DC. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Definitely. And we'll make sure you, we share your contact information down below. And then you can let me know if there's anything else you want me to share in the description. All right, great. Just definitely Dweebs Global. All definitely right. Dweebsglobal.org. All right. Thank you. And so folks, if you want to reach out to me to see again, what I'm up to, you can go to linktr.ee forward slash Chris DT Gordon. Again, there's my speaking websites where I share my message, the attitude of gratitude, 
If you are interested in hearing me share my story and my message, please let me know. That's why I do all this, to share my message and inspire people with some tag. And also, you can go there and check out the podcast, YouTube channel, some freebies like the tag, one sheet, my various uh, publication offerings, and the Chris DT Gordon's tag and pop shop. Thank you very much for joining me today. Also, remember to like, share, and subscribe, and all that YouTube and podcast stuff. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. And remember to pass on perfection and go for greatness. Greatness.